All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wabrakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth. No matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the believers, the men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women and children as well, and the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring. On that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible. So I'm on uh, this website, fortune.com, and I have a headline that says, Working While Black, Stories from Black Corporate America. We asked black employees what they wanted their non-black co-workers, supervisors, and executives to know about inclusivity in the workplace. Now, we understand we're not black, so let's, you know, for the sake of this lesson, replace that with uh, Israelites, but starting with Judah, okay? Working while black, a.k.a. working while an Israelite, because that's basically what they're saying. After George Floyd's death at the hands of a white police officer and many protests against systematic racism have geared up again across the country, prompting companies to speak out in support of racial justice. They're sharing lengthy statements declaring Black Lives Matter to staff and the public, pledging millions to, sh to social justice organizations and marking Juneteenth as a company holiday. Leaders are apologizing and resigning over problematic company culture. But system... But systemic racism within the workplace won't be resolved in one news cycle. Over half of black employees have, failed, have felt racism at work, one study shows. Only 3.2% of executives and senior manager level employees are black. Only five Fortune 500 CEOs are. Black men are paid 13% less than white men. Black women are paid 39% less than white men, which, you know, I can agree to. I can agree to that to a degree because in reality, women are, are making as much as men are today, if not more. OK, even black women. OK, a lot of these black women are doing better than a lot of so-called black men. OK, we're Israelites. But for the sake of this article, black Israelite synonymous for the same thing, because that's what it's referencing. Okay. Anyways, back to this article. Black men are paid 13% less than white men. Black women are paid 39% less than white men and 21% less than white women, according to another study. They ask for promotions and raises at about the same rate as white women, but get worse results. Fortune put a call out for black employees to share their experiences in the workplace. We received responses from executives, middle managers, and entry-level staffers. We heard from people working in tech, finance, media, and entertainment, insurance, nonprofit, nonprofits, fashion, health, and more. Altogether, they reveal the humanity behind the numbers. And they reveal that no matter what companies are saying right now, there is much work to be done. So long story short, you know, you have Israelites complaining about being treated unfairly in the work world. And I myself, I can I can testify, I can witness to that. I've I've witnessed racism on the workplace, but you know what? I'm not surprised. I understand uh what's going on. I understand who my enemies are. But a lot of our people, when they feel these feelings, it doesn't make them want to hate them back. It just makes them want to be accepted more. Like our people are weirdos, man. All right. Our people are likened unto being bullied and then at the same time trying to figure out how to become friends with this bully. The bully is, you know, giving you a black eye, pushing you around, throwing you in the trash can, dumping your head in the toilet, making you eat grass and dirt. And in the process, instead of you hating the bully, it makes you feel like, well, how can I get this bully to like me? 
How can I figure out a way to become friends with this bully? That is psychotic behavior. The reason why our people witness racism in the workplace is because this society was not set up for our people to thrive. It was set up for our punishment. All right, imagine a man, he gets with a woman, and this woman is a stripper. He falls in love with this stripper for a time being, you know, she leaves her ways. She's not stripping no more. You know, suddenly she's acting like she's wife material. Then one day she decides, you know what, I'm getting bored with this man. I'm going to go back to being a stripper. Here he is. He's crying. He's boohooing. How dare you go back to being a stripper? I thought you were better than that. No, man, that's how you met her. So with America, America started off, you know, being a bully. It started off being against Israel from the very beginning once Esau took it over. So it wasn't set up for us to have a place in this society with a fair and equal playing field as Esau or these other nations. But our people don't want to understand that. Okay, our people want to hold on to this place. All right. What what would be a good place for me to start this lesson? Um I think Micah 2 and 10 will be a good scripture. Uh, Micah 2 and 10, it reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. This place is polluted. It's not your rest. The fact that you have Israelites complaining about feeling racism on the job, that's not rest. Okay? That's a feeling of being uncomfortable, feeling targeted. All right, that's not a feeling of rest and comfort because this place was never set up for our rest from the beginning. So we have to realize as a people, don't be in that comfortable state and trying to make your bed here in Babylon. We were only brought here to serve punishment and our punishment's coming to an end. But even while it's coming to an end, we're still in our punishment. This is still punishment nevertheless. Okay, until... Yahweh sends Yahweh Shai to come deliver us. Us being the elect and the rest of the remnant. The majority of Israel, they're not going to make it. Okay, so again, Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. All right, even you Israelite women, you know, complaining about being treated unfairly on the job site, which even then, you're still being treated better than the so-called black man. So imagine how we feel. All right. Every day I go to work, I witness some form of racism, a form of arrogancy to where Esau just feels like they're better than me, man. There's been days like I've, I've had to pray to the Lord that, you know, I don't I don't get carnal because there just be days to where it's like it's, it almost feels overbearing, you know, but we, we have to stay in the spirit. You know what I mean? We have to stay in the spirit. You know, the flesh is weak, but that's why it's important for us to stay spiritual at all times and not give in to the flesh. All right. Ultimately, the Lord controls these devils. They're supposed to feel that way about us and we're supposed to feel that way about them. So let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus said the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stayed thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. All right. And guess what? This place is going to break. The society is going to collapse. All right. The money system that you know it as is going to come to an end. Putting your faith in this society has done nothing for our people, but overwhelm us. But yet you put your trust in it. So the fact that our people trust in oppression and perverseness. It just shows that our people lack knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. How can you feel racism at a job site, but then you still trust in that job? You still trust in this society, okay? And then instead of hating your enemies, instead of hating those of these other nations who hate you, you want to apply that love your enemies to your enemies of these different nations when that is supposed to apply to Israel, more so believers, okay? So putting your faith in a society that's going to collapse, putting your faith in a society that's set up to destroy you, you're eventually going to be destroyed along with it. All right. So 
trust and oppression all you like. You can you can complain about oh you know my job, you know they're racist and all this and that. But then at the same time, you're trying to be buddy buddy, and and hand in hand with the same devils who who show you all the time that they hate you. But in your mind, you might be feeling like well somehow some way I can talk this devil out of it. Look to you Israelites out there who do that. You're out of your mind, man. This society was set up to uh, to destroy us. All right. Hold on. Let me get these dogs to stop barking. Give me a second. So, but to you Israelites out there who understand where we are, who understand our position, being that this is our captivity and the Lord has to be the one to deliver us out of it, we're not, we're not concerned with being buddy-buddy with these devils. We're not concerned about being liked because we don't like them. In fact, we probably hate them far more than what they can hate us right about now, seeing that the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai resting upon us, man. All right? So, yes, it's common sense that, um, as they would say, black people um, feeling racism in the workplace in corporate America, okay, of corporate America. You know, this article came out June 16, 2020. It wasn't this year. It was last year. Nevertheless, you know, same things are happening, man. In this article, it says uh, over half of black employees have felt racism at work. So over 50% of so-called black people have felt racism at work. But yet, I guarantee over 50% of those same black people, as you will call them, whom are Israelites, still want to be buddy-buddy with the same devils who have shown hatred towards them. Okay? Because Israel is ass backwards. They don't know how to apply the scriptures when it's time to. They'll do everything wrongfully they'll apply the scriptures at the wrong time you know but when it comes to their own people they got a whole bunch of wrath and jealousy and envy you know so i'm not surprised with this article at all you know racism's always been here there's nothing wrong with racism racism comes from yahweh by shum yahweh shot we're not supposed to be mingled amongst these nations the fact that we are is punishment unto us so when we feel that racism you know, that's really just the Lord hitting us with that punishment, showing us, hey, he said he was going to do this to us and he did it. So we just got to we got to bear that iniquity for a little bit. But it's coming to an end, though. We're at the end of our captivity. OK. Now, it says here in Isaiah 30 and 12, wherefore thus said the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression. Right. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So if our people trust in oppression, it's because they're stupid. The scriptures tell you that if you're wise, okay, you'd be angry at this oppression. You won't trust in it. Only an idiot would trust in something that is destroying them. That is stupid. But then again, the, the Lord has called our people stupid, stupid children, literally. OK. Let's go to Psalms. Chapter 73. What's that? Psalm 73 and 13. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. Innocency, yeah. For all, for all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. So the fact that we speak against this oppression 
the fact that we're catching hell and we're we're speaking against it, we talk about it, our people get offended. Because Isaiah 30 and 12 tells you that our people trust in oppression. That's how dumb the majority of our people are. Yet, the majority of so-called black people, over 50% now, from what they're saying off statistics from the people that they recorded, over 50% of so-called Negroes, or who look to be Negroes, have complained about feeling racism on the job, yet our people still trust in this society. How dumb can you be? You know? How dumb can you be? That's why the scriptures tell us to separate from these, these wicked Israelites, man. There's no reasoning with them. Let them, let them go. Let them die alone. You know, they are not worth the heartache, man. Okay, the, the second you want to speak for them and, and speak against this society, they get offended at us. We become the enemy. According to Galatians 4 and 16, we become the enemy all because we're telling the truth. And then right before our eyes all the time, it's, it's being fulfilled constantly, being shown that we're enemies because of this truth. We're enemies because of the spirit that's on us, man. Okay. Let me uh, grab one more scripture here. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm already in Ezra, so I'm going to go to 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 8. 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. So we're constantly complaining. We're constantly mentioning how this society is set up to destroy us. It's set up to come against the Israelites, man. This society wasn't set up with us in mind in terms of um, being successful and prospering. This society was set up to punish us, to afflict us, even to this very day. Yes, you have millionaire Israelites. Yes, you have some billionaire Israelites out there. But on the scale of reality, they're still not nowhere close. Nowhere near those who run this whole world. They're still peasants. They're still servants because this is not our world. Even Kanye West will tell you, hey, he's worth $8 billion. But even he still feels racism. And he's still trying to make them accept him because he's a billionaire. No, you're just a billion-dollar nigga in the eyes of these devils. So we complain continually. We're hoping for the Lord to get us out sooner than later. And we feel in the spirit he's going to get us out sooner than later. That's why all these prophets are all throughout the earth being risen up, man. Okay, so it's a very, very uh, beautiful time. A lot of you Israelites are questionable in terms of, you know, the words out here and you still out here trying to kiss Esau's ass. But to you Israelites who are who are awake, who are aware. Amen. Stay in prayer. Stay faithful. Stay hopeful. You know, keep in mind, you know, when we do face the afflictions of this world that we're at the end of it. And they're going down very, very soon. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakwadash. Shalom.